Ah, uh, yeah. Him, Ruth? Yeah. What's the matter? That book club. A game. Still. The Human Body Series number eight. How We Hear. The story of the ear. They are persistent, don't they? <laughs> this is the longest ten-day trial period in history. How long has it been, exactly? The ten-day trial period will be one year old this Friday. <laughs> I have written dozens of times. All I ever get is form letters, punch cards, bills, and more books. But you sent the first book back long before the ten days were up. Of course I did, and then I returned the next one. But I refuse to let them inconvenience me anymore. They'll just have to send the man and pick these up. Do I detect a note of bitterness? Not uh, bitterness exactly, more like stubbornness. I just refuse to let a bunch of machines punch cards and tell me what to do. Right. I think. I wish a business letter didn't have to start with dear sir or gentleman. I feel like being much less polite. Who are you writing to? The Book Club Society of America. Oh. I thought you were going to play a waiting game with them. Let them wonder. I was, but they don't want to play. I received an other book this morning and a new form letter. What does the form letter say? In reply, refer to file number 8-774-682-1-942. Maybe if we pull a few strings, we can get you a lower number. Well, I wouldn't want to do that. This is the nicest part of the letter. <laughs> okay. I'm listening. Dear club member, we are at a loss to understand why we have not received a payment from you to cover your outstanding balance of $112.50 on the human body series. $112.50? Unless we receive prompt payment of your account, we will regretfully be forced to turn the matter over to our collection agency. Please return in closed form. Do not spindle and mutilate or fold. I can't see how anybody can get things so fouled up. Well, it's just another installment. I've been receiving these letters for over a year. That long? Would you like to hear them? Is there anything on television? Not as exciting as this correspondence. All right. I'm ready. Uh, July 17th, the last year. Gentlemen, I'm returning to you in closed the first book in the Human Body series. How We Eat, The Story of the Stomach, as agreed in your 10-day free trial offer. I do not wish to continue with the other books in the series. Thank you. Sincerely yours, Katie Holstrom. It's perfectly clear. To you, but not to them. <laughs> August 12th. Dear Miss Holstrom, we are happy. No, happy is putting it mildly. We are delighted you like the first book in the Human Body series. How We Eat, The Story of the Stomach. And we look forward to your continued enjoyment of the book to follow. You will receive very shortly another book entitled How We Lift, The Story of the Arm. Happy reading. Please return and close form. Do not spindle, mutilate, or fall. <laughs> Sincerely, B. Crump. November 19th. Dear Mr. Crump, I return from an otherwise pleasant trip, my honeymoon, to find two more books in the Human Body series waiting for me. How We Stand, The Story of the Foot, and How We Move, The Story of the Leg. I do not want these books. I am not now, nor do I wish to be, a member of the Book Club Society. Please adjust your records. January 8th, dear sir, 
the start of a new year gives me hope we can straighten out this mess. I informed your organization on several occasions that I did not want the human body theory. Please believe me, I mean it. And be good enough to stop sending me bills and books. March 8th, <laughs> Jensen. May I suggest you make your latest book, How We Think, The Story of the Brain, compulsory reading for every executive in your company. <laughs> I am beginning to suspect that only after mastering the art of thinking will anybody there be able to read my letter and understand that I do not want the human body theory. Weary, Mrs. Glenn Moore. P.S. May I also suggest a new volume? How we write the story of a frustrating correspondent. We do not have a book entitled How We Write, but we are instead sending you a book club favorite, Letter Writing, a Fading Art. <laughs> Meanwhile, may we have your payment for the story of the stomach, the story of the arm, the story of the leg. The story of the finger, the story of the tongue, the story of the brain. Please remit, etc., etc., etc. Do not spindle, mutilate, or fold. So if anybody asks you what I do to keep busy all day, you have an answer. This is really outrageous. And they won't listen to me. Well, I'm listening to you. Exactly. And since now you are familiar with the details, I place the whole thing in your hands. Hey, wait a minute. There's nothing I can do that you can't. Wrong. They are taking advantage of me because I'm a woman. They will listen to a man better. No, oh, Katie, it's all done by machine, don't you understand? It doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman. Well, it matters to me. Glenn, as far as I'm concerned, you are now in charge of talking to the book club machine. <laughs> hey, that's it. That's it? What's it? Well, since we can't reach them through letters, obviously... Obviously? We'll have to talk to them through their own machines. <laughs> Sure, I'm familiar with their machines. Great, then you might have some inkling as to what might make them go wrong. Yeah, the usual things that make machines go wrong. What's that? The people handling them don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Do you have any equipment that could duplicate this card? Maybe punch a few extra holes in it? Sure. Now, that's my plan. You punch some random holes and then... Uh, Glenn, I can do that. I can punch anything I want. But? But it'd be a terrible mistake. Well, why? It would certainly get their attention. That's my point. Their attention is just what you don't want. No, I don't follow you. How else are we going to clear this darn thing up? Well, certainly not by involving more people. That was the trouble in the first place. <laughs> well, you've lost me. Keep the people out of it. The people who ball things up. Then, how... Ah, hmm? by dealing directly with the machines. That's where the power is. Please. <laughs> That's pretty spooky, Jim. Oh, don't worry, pal. Uh, machines are mostly good guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll punch up a new card that'll stop the shipments and credit your bill. Oh, oh you think you can uh, do that, huh? Oh, Glenn, what we can do with machines today is... Frightening, huh? I was going to say marvelous. I'll tell you the truth. You can have a lot of fun with machines. Yeah, yeah, I'll bet they're, I'll bet they're a million laughs. <laughs> and good looking, too. Gee, I didn't think a layman would appreciate that. Dear Mrs. Morley, mere words cannot apologize profusely enough for the inexcusable bungling, the unforgivable inconvenience to which we have subjected you. <laughs> Dear Mrs. Morley, I wish to take this opportunity personally to thank you for your new order. <laughs> thank you for your new order. A few Himmelers are permissible. 
But to go on talking to yourself in whole sentences is grounds for commitment. Well, if this keeps up, I will be willing to be committed. What is it? The book club is threatening again. Well, there's one thing you have to say for them. What? They don't make idle threats. Do you mean? The books are in the living room. Books, plural? Books, very plural. The human body series? The human mind series. The encyclopedia. <laughs> There they are. <laughs> the entire encyclopedia? No, no, dear. Only A to C-U-T. Twelve volumes. It takes twelve volumes to go from A to C-U-T? No, dear. Twelve copies of the same volume, A to C-U-T. <laughs> That's a delivery for Mrs. Morley. I'm sure. Come in. Come in. I know. <laughs> oh, not again. Heaven knows. Let's open up this batch and see if they have a listing under M-I-G. Well, what's under M-I-G? Migraine. <laughs> <laughs> Your operator, I want the Book Club Society of America in New York. I have direct dialed, and I have gotten a direct no answer. <laughs> Thank you. Hello? I would like to speak to Mr. Crump, please. Mr. B. Crump. And if he is not available, I will speak to anyone in the sales department. And after that, I would like to speak to the credit department. And just to be sure that there are no slip-ups, after that, I wish to speak to the shipping department. Is that clear? This is a recording. There is no one at present in the office. However, if you will state your message, it will be recorded and the matter referred to the proper authority. When you hear the beep, you have 30 seconds. Beep. Hello, recording. This is a real live person speaking. If I stated the message I feel like stating, there would be nothing but beeps for 30 seconds. When you hear the slam, that will be me hanging up. <laughs> Mrs. Morley? Yes? Uh, I'm Abner Brown of the Arcadia Collection Company. You must be representing the Book Club Society of America. That's right. Now, Mrs. Morley. Please, come in. Come in? Me? Yes, Mr. Brown. I'm delighted to meet someone who's had personal contact with the book club. People don't usually ask me in. But this is not a usual case, Mr. Brown. as I think you will admit once you hear the whole story. Mrs. Morley, that's all pretty frightening when you come right down to it. But I don't know what you want me to do. I want you to take this story to the Arcadia Collection Agency, tell it to them. And if they tell it to the book club, maybe, just maybe, somebody will listen. And maybe we can get the whole thing straightened out. I doubt it. You doubt it? Why? Because of the times in which we live. What do you mean? Well, what's happened to you is a perfect example. There's no communication. Everybody talks, but nobody listens. You listen. I'm a throwback to a more gracious age. <laughs> there may be others who, given the opportunity, would share your philosophy. No, we're in a machine age, and once the machinery starts, it's pretty hard to stop. Well, that's very discouraging, isn't it? Yeah, but that's the way it is. So, Mrs. Morley? Yeah? How about paying the bill? <laughs> Two dozen copies of an encyclopedia. Two dozen copies of volume one of an encyclopedia. At twenty-four ninety-five a copy. I can't understand it. Well, you must have punched the wrong holes. It couldn't be the machine. No, it really couldn't. 
I'm afraid it's that old human factor, buddy. In this case, me. Well, what now? Oh, I say, let's compromise. Send it all back, including whatever books you have from the Human Body series. I see no reason why we should accommodate them. Oh, I don't want to accommodate them. I just don't want them to turn our home into their Washington warehouse. If they can ignore us, we can ignore them. Yes, but they're not. Oh, no. I made a stupid mistake. Oh, I know what I did. Jim, we can't afford any more mistakes. I've got it now. It's a simple adjustment. Yes, but if you don't happen to have it, why don't we deal with it my way? Glenn, you've got to let me beat them at their own game, machine to machine. It's the only way. <laughs> I don't see why. Because believe me, it's the people who are making all the trouble. The machine is neutral. But I don't want the machine to be neutral. I want it on my side. <laughs> That's just what I have in mind. Believe me. As I recall, Believing you is how we wound up with uh, 24 volumes, A to C-U-T. <laughs> Mrs. Morley? Yeah? Uh, my name is Robbins, John Robbins. I'm with the Book Club Society. I don't believe it. I can show you my card. Oh, no, please. Uh, come in. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> I didn't believe there were real, actual, live people working for the Book Club Society. Well, uh, I'm vice president in charge of public relations. Forgive me for saying it, but it cannot be a very large department. It isn't, just at the moment. Me and my secretary, but the plan to expand as rapidly as possible. It's a very new area for the company. I know. Uh, this way, please. Uh, may I ask what miracle brings you to Washington and to this house? Well, we've been having a little trouble lately, but we finally narrowed it down and found the source, we think. Oh. <laughs> Mrs. Morley, have you been fooling around with our punch cards? What makes you ask that, Mr. Robinson? Well, punch cards attributable to your account have, among other things, cut off the salary of our president for two weeks in a row. <laughs> Dispatched our entire board of directors to Kansas City. No. And caused a complete edition of the human follicle, a hair-raising story, to be printed in equal parts of Urdu and Hindustani. Then I am delighted, Mr. Robinson. I am overcome with delight. You dislike our president, Mrs. Morley? You have a, uh, a vendetta against our board of directors? Oh, there's nothing personal, Mr. Robbins. But I might as well say right now that you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> What do you mean, Mrs. Morley? Well, I really didn't believe it, Mr. Robbins. But there seems to be a way for the average citizen to resist creeping machinism. Creeping machinism? Yeah. The enveloping of our little world by huge computers and the little men who hide behind them. But, Mrs. Morley... I, I do not wish to discuss it with you. The time for talking is past. What I want now is... Action. I'll do the best. If I don't get action, Mr. Robbins, I'm going to organize a new club today. Known as the Spindling, Mutilating, and Folding Society of America. But, but Mrs. Morley... Uh... The Spindling, Mutilating, and Folding Society of America will lease their own punch card machine. They will install them at strategically located places across the country to these busy centers of activity. The club members will send their punch card for suitable changes. You wouldn't. I would, and I will. But, um, but if we take back the books... Take back the books? But, but that was another thing I came to tell you. You just uh, didn't give me a chance. Now? Now? Well, I... Right now. Right now. <laughs> May I suggest you read How We Lift, the story of the arm? <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Robbins, here is a copy of How We Lift, the story of the arm. I want you to know I always keep my word. Thank you, Mrs. Morley. I can find my own way out. <laughs> Well, all things considered, he took that very well. Yeah, but the worst is yet to come. How so? When he returns those books, the machines are going to be very unhappy. <laughs> I know they wouldn't dream of spindling, mutilating, or folding a car. But 
I'm not so sure how they feel about humans. <laughs> Hello, Glenn. Hi. For you. Oh, the book club society. They will carefully consider reorganizing their trial program. Well. Well, indeed. Listen to this from the same organization. Dear Mr. Katie Morley, <laughs> we have recently received an unauthorized return shipment of books purchased by you over the last 10 months. Unless we have further information at once, we will be forced to return this shipment to you. Kindly note your reasons for return on the enclosed card. Do not spindle, mutilate, or fold. Please note, I do not spindle, mutilate, or fold. I merely take this little card and throw it into the fire. <laughs> but mark my words. Oh, I'm marking. Before long, the little cards will say, please do not spindle, mutilate, fold, or burn. <laughs> but in the meantime, we're holding on. <laughs>